Welcome to the Weekly Hijack. Hello, everyone. So tonight in Once Upon a Time, the episode is... Her Handsome Hero. Okay. Where we had a uh, nice or not so nice Gaston. Uh, at least he wasn't quite as uh, Gaston-like as uh, you might expect in terms of like pure jerkiness. So let, let's, let's start with Gaston. Okay. Okay, so I thought it was interesting and, and a good move, I think, to make him different than... The boorish... Yeah, because... That would know, have been a very interesting character for long term, anyway. Yeah, well, and it's always nice, to, the, you know, the fascination, especially the early seasons of Once More Time, was that the characters were the same and different mm. than we knew. Right. And we get just, like, you know, just the characters. It's usually not as interesting as the character plus or minus something. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I was a little, uh, I was a little annoyed at the end where they're, I'm like, oh no, they're going to make him evil. They're going to make him evil. And then he has the dark eye, he demon eyes and except then I ended up not being quite as, because here's the thing. Once upon a time does that all the time. Oh, Arthur's good. Oh no, he's not. You know? <laughs> oh, the, 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 the art author. The, our, 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 no, Arthur? The, the writer. The writer. It's good. Oh no, he's not. You know. Yeah. There's a lot of that sort of thing. But then he didn't end up being like evil. He was just... He was, I mean, he was kind of like Rumple in some ways. Well, Rumple's more evil, but in the fact that he almost just wanted to protect, I don't know. I didn't. It didn't come off as like a like a hundred eighty degree turn. It came off as like a forty five degree turn or a like, ninety. Yeah, he wasn't like he was still not like pure villain. He was like your average person who has flaws. Yeah, in, in a lot of ways. So I could deal with that. Yeah, at the end, you know, she still was going to marry him. You no, know, she felt like there was still something there, and he For, wasn't. And he was not. He wasn't really lying about himself. He yeah. was going to kill the ogre to begin with, anyways. Yeah, and she convinced him. So it didn't bother me as much as I was afraid it would. Mm-hmm. It, it was it was kind of a twist that we all saw coming. Yeah, but yeah, and that's just what it is. Yeah, this episode there was a lot of good stuff, and there was there was some like kind of retreading old ground sort of weirdness like okay let's we'll talk about some of the good stuff the rumpelstiltskin and bell relationship was really interesting to watch this episode because they're both they're honest about it and bell's become you know not just optim the problem with bell is that her optimism is sometimes horribly naive yeah and this felt like a more mature exploration of their relationship yeah. in, a, in, in ways like Which we needed a lot yeah we really did we needed Bell to hold Rebel still kind of accountable a little bit more, and not just be like, "Look, you're not really trying that hard." Yeah, know? exactly. Like, yeah, and not be completely blind to all this. Like, oh, you'll you'll be good eventually, you know. Now, at the same time, you still had that silly moment oh. of like, "Look, I don't think I should tell you this." Rebel, and then Rebel's like, "You can trust me, Bell." I'm like, "Well, when has that ever been?" The I case? don't like. Come on, I mean, you just got done chewing them out for being, and I do enjoy that they're actually talking about. Kind of the ambiguity of magic, you know, like, can you have dark magic and be good? I mean, okay, like, light magic, Emma's light magic is not inherently good. I mean, it's light magic, but it's not like she's some sort of paragon of virtue. So I don't really, the black dark, it's all very vague morally. It is. And I think at one time they had had tried to have a more defining line. I remember the blue fairy saying something along the lines of, well, light magic is this and dark magic lead you down this bad yeah. path and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, like the, um, because the Regina had dark magic, right? She used it for good all the time. Essentially. I mean, granted I, I dark was, one magic is yeah, different, well, darker, darker, <laughs> but yeah, it's the, the show in general I wouldn't be surprised if it eventually takes on a sort of more yin yang idea, which is yeah. not a philosophy I agree with at all. But it's a very it's a very popular compromise. Yeah, modern day. Well, you need well, like the Dragonlance books. You need the evil and the good in balance, or everything goes out of whack. Yeah, and you're like, okay, I don't know how that works in real life, but <laughs> sure, it makes you feel nice. It course, makes a nice story. fancy system and stuff. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that's the direction they go though. Hades still has, like, a lot of control and yet not enough control. Yeah. Like, he still has to go through all these machinations for some reason. But You know what? Or like, why does he ever do anything himself? But at least in this episode, he gets it all, you know, he kind of sets it in motion. And then what happens is that it, you know, he's trying to take away hope. Mm-hmm. And maybe if he's doing it himself, you get martyr syndrome in some ways where you just fight back even harder. Yeah, but as long be. as you have the, the populace fighting among themselves. Yeah. I, I just I keep wondering why he doesn't do things more directly, and maybe it's I mean partly it's the drama of it. Yeah, 
But I wonder if there's an actual reason. There's certainly something of the uh, whole temp- the tempter in uh, Hades coming out in this episode. He was very yeah. he was trying to be very tempting to Bell and the whole and his whole deal spiel. And there's a good yeah, scene. And there is there's some there's something too about making your uh, good person doing something bad that yeah. kind of furthers darkness. You know. Yeah. So yeah, very rough ending for Belle at the end of this. Um, she didn't really accomplish anything what she was looking for. Yeah, but uh, like I said, interesting exploration with her and Rumpelstiltskin. It was nice to have an actual semi civil conversation between Regina and Selena. It didn't last long, but it was a nice again another one of those they're bridging relationships and trying to fix certain things. You know, I don't mm-hmm. know they'll ever be completely fixed, but at least it was nice to not have them kindly throwing snide remarks at each other constantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last week, Zelina, um, we felt a little bit of sympathy for her or empathy or whatever yeah. because of her baby. And she seemed to actually have one part of her that was good there. But the whole scene where she gets the flower from um, <laughs> Hades and she smiles, there's still, I mean, I don't, it's, it's interesting to watch this relationship because it's not, they're both hideous characters <laughs> and there's nothing really good about either of them. No. And yet there is this romance. It's just unusual to have a romance between two characters that we pretty much hate. Yeah. Strikes me as a very Tim Burton sort of scene. Too. <laughs> yeah, the, the it is a great scene. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, he sent me a dead flower. Oh. <laughs> Hard decay. Um, I, I do have to say, I, well, I, I'm always happy when they address things like where uh, Emma's like, I just feel bad. This was a horrible plan to bring you all down here. I'm like, thank you for yes. at least saying that. Because I remember at the end of the last half season, I'm like, why is everyone and their brother going? You know, I shouldn't have brought Henry. Yes. <laughs> why did you bring your son down here? I mean, really. So at least they, you know, they've admitted it and they're dealing with it, and we get a hope, love, family speech from Snow, and I feel better about it. You know, it's like mm-hmm. at least they recognize that it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Again, it would have been nice to have a little bit of that conversation early, but they wouldn't ha- have the cliffhanger. And I, you know, I get that because yeah, they bend over backwards sometimes to get the characters going where they want them to go. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work, and then they have to acknowledge it as much after the fact. I like the idea that uh, Hades' weakness is moving people on. Yes, and we kind of see at least as part of a weakness is you know hope and moving people on, and mm-hmm. that he likes people to be in this purgatory basically forever. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where that might go. Because I think it would be cool if we had sort of a follow-up to Rumpelstiltskin's kind of hero boot camp thing. Where, yeah. like, if he's put in a situation where he's sort of forced to not just have courage for a change, yeah. which was a good first step. But if you could actually give Rumpelstiltskin compassion, yeah, that would go further to redeeming him than you know everything else than than anything else and then it kind of set up some you know there's at least a possibility that he could use his darkness in a good way like i said that if they go with a yin yang yeah yeah that that would be the direction they would go in trying to do that i don't think there's anything else the first time we ever saw an ogre actually right they've talked about him quite a lot have we seen him before i feel like we have oh okay i couldn't remember i know they talk about the ogre wars constantly we saw well i guess we saw a troll bridge that, like yeah. way back in the beginning. Maybe back when, you but, know, Rumpel had his uh his flashback, wave flashback when he went to the Ogre War. Maybe yeah. we saw one there. I thought it was a decent looking ogre. Sometimes once upon a time has struggles with their uh, CG creatures, but I I really liked the emotion that the ogre yeah. had. So that was pretty good. Yeah. So it was a pretty decent episode and we got get a apparently a little uh, not little red riding hood, but a Red Riding Hood. Uh, <laughs> older, Red older Red Riding, 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 Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood. <laughs> Next time. And apparently Mulan in the flashback, at least, if not in... If not in uh, Underworld. Yeah, because we don't know how why Red is in Yeah, whether well, she's dead or not dead. Or I mean, if she's not dead, the only problem with her not being dead is how many not dead people are down there at this point? <laughs> well, just our main cast at this point. Well, I know, but yeah. Well, and then... I know, but they've come in two separate ways now. Are we going to add well, a third way? Yeah. It's like, beans are very rare, except we're finding them all the time. Oh, that's true. You know? And I guess Lena and Belle weren't, didn't come yeah. with the initial group either. Yeah, they came so. a second way. Okay, I see your point. <laughs> so, I mean, you could, but it just... I mean... Th- I don't really want her to be dead either. For as rare as portals into other worlds are in Once Upon a Time, they're also very common. They're also very common, <laughs> yes. All right, I think that'll do it for this one. Stay tuned to us at... 
your old trains of thought that blogspot.com your itunes your youtube your stitcher your leave us a comment whatever. or a review at uh, wherever it is you, applicable where, wherever you go yeah yeah <laughs> wherever anywhere wherever. on the internet talk about us <laughs> go yeah <laughs> on, on the all, NP- all, all the all the forums must talk about us no matter where you are <laughs> on the npr comment board so on uh, <laughs> huffington post talk about and be like who are you and, and why are you spamming us and, that would be awesome and we will disavow any uh any knowledge <laughs> okay we're done all right <laughs> thanks this, this has been tim this has been nick natasha talked once <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> bye, bye.